As many of you probably already know, there is a little bit of a boogaloo happening in China, a long overdue boogaloo, mind you, and uh, during this boogaloo, uh, it seems that a BBC journalist was arrested and beaten. So, China's based. <laughs> Get on. But it's basically a Chinese ambassador summoned to foreign office after BBC news reporter was beaten because it was he was trying to cover uh, the riots happening in China. China's ambassador to the UK has been summoned to the foreign office after the arrest and beating of a BBC journalist. Fury has been sparked in Britain after Edward Lawrence, a camera operator for BBC's China Bureau, was hit and kicked by officers in Shanghai. The disturbing footage shows him shout to colleagues to alert the British consulate in the city as he's dragged away. He was covering a protest from citizens taking to the streets to oppose the country's draconian zero-Covid policy. I love how like, all the news media outlets are like, oh, this is terrible, yes, these brave Chinese people that are protesting against the government. Uh, yeah, yeah, where, where were you when we were all doing that? Where were you when the trucker convoy was happening in Canada? Yeah, bet, bet you demonised those people, didn't you? Oh, but it's different because it's this time it's against a government that we don't like. Yeah, we don't like the Chinese government. So yeah, absolutely based, uh, rising up against the government. You know, but our authoritarian government's a good one, so if you rise up against that one, then, like, you're bad. You're bad, and you deserve to be fired from your jobs. Blah, 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 and all that kind of stuff. Fucking bullshit. Shut up. Uh, China's foreign ministry has contested the BBC's claims, saying Mr. Lawrence did not identify himself as a journalist, but saying Zhuang uh, has now been called by Foreign Secretary James Cleverly, who has described the incident as deeply disturbing. Uh, a source... I love how he says he didn't say he was a journalist. <laughs> it's like... He still, he still beat him. <laughs> he still beat him and arrested him. A source from the Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office said today, the Chinese ambassador has been called to the FCDO. The BBC has been clear. One of its journal one of their journalists was detained and beaten by police when covering these protests. And there's like an image of it there. Uh, we have made it clear that clear this behaviour by the Chinese authorities is completely unacceptable. By the way, that is as far as it's going to go. There's going to be no punishment or anything whatsoever for China. None. None whatsoever. They're just going to drag him in and go, this was very, very bad. You did the bad thing. Please do not do the bad thing anymore. That's it. There's not going to be any punishments, you know, any repercussions whatsoever. Because, you know, the governments are so cut to China. Uh, the BBC bosses uh, were extremely concerned about the treatment of our journalist Ed Lawrence. During his arrest, he was beaten and kicked by police, a statement said. This happened while he was working as an accredited journalist. Speaking in Beijing, Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesman Zhao Lijian said, according to our understanding, the BBC statement is not true. Uh, even though there's literal video footage of it happening. According to authorities in Shanghai, the journalist in question did not reveal his journalist identity at the time. He did not openly show his foreign press card. When the incident happened, law enforcement personnel asked people to leave, and when certain people did not cooperate, they were taken away from the scene, even though there's video footage of them. <laughs> beating the guy up. Uh, rallies against China's strict anti-coronavirus measures spread to a number of cities over the weekend and the biggest show of opposition to the ruling Communist Party in decades. Apparently the protesters were also planning on uh, marching towards Tiananmen Square. Now I don't know if you're a history buff, but the last time protesters in China done that, it, it started an event which uh, the Chinese people are actually banned from talking about. <laughs> Funny that. Uh, authorities uh, eased some rules, but it wasn't enough for citizens who have faced on and off restrictions since 2020, a bit like the rest of us. But when we protest, we are the bad guys. Uh, the protests appear to have calmed down today, with Shanghai, Nanjing and other cities quiet following online calls to gather. And there's been a lot of other, like, sort of dodgy stuff that's been happening with all that as well. But yeah, uh, if there's any country that deserves to have a boogaloo, it's China. <laughs> like, they... Like, uh, if the Chinese people wanted to rise up and overthrow the government, yeah, completely understandable. I absolutely get it. Because the Chinese government, well, they're, they're terrible. They're one of the most authoritarian governments in the entire planet. And unfortunately, there's over a billion of them. Uh, but, you know, I think, you know, some discord sown in the right places. I mean, like I say, there's a billion of them. You know, it's a whole... There are 1.2 billion of us, but only 5% of us work in government. Can you dig it? You know, like... I'm just saying, if it happened, I would support it. I think that'd be great. You know, the Chinese government's absolutely fucking terrible. But I just I just like this this uh, complete hypocrisy coming for the media where they're like, oh, these brave, brave people fighting against a tyrannical, horrible government that's forcing 
like extreme COVID restrictions on them. But when it happened in America and the UK and Canada, we were these crazy right wing fringe lunatics. Oh, I never, uh, yeah, yeah. Fucking pick one. <laughs>